loss is like I take my wins, right? Right on. Every loss that I took made me better. It prepared me for the win. Right on. And sometimes when I win, it's, it's a loss. Because I think I did it right. I think I perfected it. Right. But in every win, there's something you did wrong. That's right. So you got to know how to take your wins like you take your loss. Yo, easy. What's up, guys? My name is Evan Duvall. This is Easy Does It. Thank you for joining us. All right, guys. What's going on? We are back with episode eight of Easy Does It podcast. My name is Evan Duvall. This is Jason Etherly. Yeah, man. Stoked Welcome. to be here. Man, it's it's quite a cool story that we're uh, we're sitting here today. I'm excited to get into the conversation and uh, talk about just how full circle this has really come for me. Um, but also, you know, just share your story of yeah. your journey. Yeah. And uh, so please introduce yourself. Cool. I'm Jason Etherly. Um, I'm 33 years old and lived in Austin for about six and a half years. Um, come from Kansas when I graduated high school. I kind of just, you know, my, I knew my family was going to stay there but I knew I had to make choices uh, within like not even thinking about a career, but just something to do. Cause it was just so uh, spread out and not a lot of art community going on there. Um, so when I was 18, I just took a book bag and 80 bucks and went to Dallas and uh, sold a painting on MySpace for 800 bucks. And <laughs> I bought hotel time for like, I think four days uh, within that four days, I found a mall uh, called the Stonebriar mall in Frisco. And they were selling like, you know, sailboat paintings and uh, like just regular like stuff, pretty much yeah. not too loud of anything. And I was like, it's a perfect opportunity for me to like just put whatever I want in there, something weird. Sweet. And so they took a 50% commission. And at the time I was working at like PacSun next door. Yeah. And so uh, it was a time where I was working at PacSun, going in there, spending all these hours folding stuff. And then I was selling some paintings and that was building up enough to pay for more than what I was getting paid at PacSun. And then that's when that like transition started. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like you just kind of cut ties. You're like, this ain't it. Kansas wasn't necessarily the vibes and packed that bag and, and made that trip. And I mean, it takes, it takes a lot of guts to, to make that journey. Yeah. And, I appreciate um, that. Yeah. What, what called you to Dallas specifically? Uh, I was born in Dallas, but my parents split up when I was three, you know, like the typical, I say typical, but it happens so often, you know, being my age. Um, so my mom just took me to California when I was three and then hadn't really talked to my dad since I, like, until I was like 14 and we just did our own thing. Uh, and then we made, like, she met someone in the air force and that's how we got transferred to Kansas mm -hmm. when I was like four or five. Okay. And so, and then I spent, you know, until I graduated there and, uh, met a lot of good people, but just seeing the, like, I don't know, the transition of people, like either you're going to work for an aircraft company or any of the big Raytheon Cessna places out right. there. Um, and there wasn't, there was some tattoo shops. Luckily I had enough influence within my friends and like going downtown every once in a while to like see, uh, just tattoo artists or somebody on a ladder painting for sure. Um, and that was enough to like, give me the tick to, oh, you could to get do this. Out. Yeah. You could probably do this full time. So, yeah. um, and that's then, cool, man. Yeah. I think I kind of have like an opposite story, right? I was like raised in Austin around art, around culture <laughs> and then, uh, joined the military yeah. and found none of or very little of that, you know, individuals um, that were few and far between that had a artistic eye or creative vision. Um, and so I'm excited to be reintegrated into that. Yeah. You, you know how free freeing it is for an individual to feel like they can express themselves Absolutely, or, yeah. you know, lean into their creative pursuits. Um, yeah, man. And so something about, you know, the way I, I found you, you know, um, I've been following Jason for, you know, you said you've been in Austin for six and a half, yeah, six and a half seven years, years yeah. seven years. Yep. And, uh, so that was when I was about, um, maybe junior, senior year of high school. And, you know, I'd ride around town and I saw these pieces around town of the, the queen with, yeah. uh, the gas mask. And y'all may have seen the, the water tower painting out front here. Um, Nope, I don't have my water bottle, um, but I carry it with me every day, man. But that was his first piece that caught my eye. And um, it was at the beginning of an era of Spray TX, which was a, a local company that was kind of leaning into 
uh, graffiti and given street artists, you know, paint that was legit. Yeah, just a bit nice platform. Yeah, and then they were throwing parties where they were having artists jam on walls. And it was like, it was a really pivotal point in Austin where we we're really leaning into that street art culture and actually giving people a platform to uh, get exposure. And um, so that was day one that that piece spoke to me. And um, you'll see it all over town. And and uh, it's it's something that's followed me. I'll probably get it tattooed on me at some point. <laughs> yeah. um, but I think I hit you up maybe, you know, four or five years ago, like, yo, if I got this tattooed on me, would it would you be cool with that? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's it's cool to see because I've I have seen around fifty uh queen pieces tattooed yeah. on other people and and some of them will send me, you know, the the finished product and some yeah. people will be like, Can I do this? Or like Yeah. Yeah. I, I, have, I haven't leaned in, but I need to. Yeah. I always try to have an open mind with everything as far as, you know, even my stuff being painted over by people. I'm just like, I don't know. For sure. At least I love what I do. Like I I just want to continue doing that. Like Yeah. And most of the people that are painting over your work are kind of going angst, you know, they got some own personal issues that they're working on but yeah i think um for those of you that were a part uh, i think it was episode uh five we did at something cool studios who um jason and i both know and have worked with but i spoke with niz kind of about um like street etiquette in art you know and and having these conversations on public platforms and um kind of just educating people that there is an etiquette to painting. There is an etiquette to enjoying art and mostly just speaking on to how much effort goes into these pieces and people expressing themselves. Yeah. There is nothing easy about a big wall. Yeah, you know? for sure. And so I, let's go through that process. You know, so at first it was, it was it started in a shop in a mall for 50% commission. Yeah. And getting, then getting turned down by a lot of different galleries, just showing yeah. up. And, and I could see why at the time I was young and just painting literally whatever, but it was right. different stuff, you know, original, all original stuff. No, I never printed any of my works. Um, so yeah, I just started doing that. And, uh, in Frisco, like maybe, I mean, I've always known about graffiti and stuff, but I haven't got up in a way that I had my own image. Right. I was kind of being patient on that. I didn't want to rush it. Yeah. You know how Shepard, Barry has his Andre giant image and people mm -hmm. have logos and stuff they put out. I just didn't want to like rush into it. Mm -hmm. Um, so it kind of came naturally, but I was drawing a bunch of flash for tattoo stuff and, uh, really had my hand on the paper a lot more than canvas. So right. was, that's when I came up with my queen image and I was drawing it in 2011. And then, um, when I finished it and had a couple little things that meant something to me, but didn't have any words to it or nothing right. like that. It was just an image and, uh, when I was done with it, I was like, yeah, this is something I need to like, it was big. I need to like, you know, get photographed and turn into a an image. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, I started seeing it going up everywhere, probably yeah. 2011, 2012. And I was like, man, this guy is throwing down and, yeah. and little did I know that I'd be sitting here, you know, one well, interesting, I saw him post up a, uh, a piece that he was selling and, and Jason just, you know, just had me over for a coffee and, and sold me this piece of art. And, um, I really saw the opportunity for collaboration there. Yeah. Um, but it just said something that there was so something so grounded about your approach and, um, for someone to be featured in galleries and to have as much success, um, the way you have with art and then just have such a, uh, a grounded, authentic, real approach. Like you don't forget where you came from you know and i really appreciate that about yeah, you man it's i've gotten so much love and that, that's the only thing i try to pay attention to man because it's there's so much to get distracted from when you come in the midst of a city and there's times where i just threw myself out there not knowing what's going to happen you know never came from money just like opportunity 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 yeah. and then you learn like not all money is good money right um there's lots of strings attached sometimes yeah yeah so but it's been all uphill i mean i'm, a, I'm not a comfortable spot because i don't like to say i'm too comfortable but right. i like to just keep it moving yeah and just to moving. to feel received you know to be it's featured yeah to be in galleries you know there's yeah. there's a lot to be said for artists that get no response at all and they're just pouring their heart into their work right yeah. maybe they're dialing it in but i mean i think it's really important for us to acknowledge people in that place mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. there's a lot of people out there expressing themselves that will probably never 
get any real um opportunities come from that and maybe for an artist that's that's what's important to them you know yeah for sure and um but you know to take that into a career and to be able to you know come from just that kid that came from kansas and packed a single backpack yeah. and lean into selling a piece on yeah. myspace yeah <laughs> to being gallery featured and now you know who knows man sacrificed a lot but then we all know somebody that like either a friend that's talented that doesn't necessarily like they got you see their work and you're just like wow like, yeah this is gnarly like you're really a painter painter and mm -hmm. and they don't have the drive to just go put themselves out there and maybe uh get turned over or like you know treated a wrong way For or sure. something like and i can totally see it because it's not a fun fun position to be in but yeah i think those sacrifices like you get to learn from them and, and be stoked on them later for sure yeah well my friend kate over there painting right now yeah. she's a, a genuine and true artist in that way you know it's not her full-time pursuit but you can tell that she genuinely loves painting and yeah. and the 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 talent and uh you know genuine artisan is is there thank you for sharing that with yeah. us <laughs> um but yeah i think that's that's something i got into with louise and and niz and i'd like to hear your take on it as well is is getting on that level where money starts to come into play um and big walls are up for grabs you know um we all appreciate these big huge spaces and it brings a lot of color to our city um but it, it's a it's a hustle out there too for an artist to truly get a space um, where they're able to express themselves full artistic freedom. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that, you know, Hope Outdoor, or, you know, something cool. And um, what was Castle Hill, you know. Without, without any of this, we wouldn't. Like a lot of, you yeah. know, us artists don't really come from much. We don't have much platforms. For sure. Uh, college is, you know, it's nice and you, you, you learn different things from it. And, um, but yeah, I think from where we're coming from it's like there's not much and the no. people that raise their hand and say hey i got the space like yeah you can do put you put your stuff in there it's like ah oh, for sure so cool yeah, yeah that's so, so cool i think that's what makes this city special is um i wouldn't say the ease but um just people they they're looking to collaborate and figure out uh, about themselves and yeah. the community that yeah in. yeah and that's that's what seems to be huge it's not all dollar signs for a lot of people here um, a lot of people are grounded in expressing themselves in a true and genuine manner. And, um, you know, it's something that I, I would like to touch on with you, you know, is I think there's like from your style and your approach, I, I get this very authentic kind of like old fashioned, like flash tat type background of art. And it's it's so timeless, yeah, you know, that. and I think a lot of us aim to carry ourselves in a in an authentic way. Right. Yeah, I hope so. Money can't be on the mind. Right. There's a lot of things that can't be on the mind when you're creating something that, that that's wanting that you're wanting to thrive or something yeah. that's going to succeed. Or, right. You know, so. Yeah, to be genuine. Yeah. Um, it's, but, hard. it's hard for anybody. Yeah. yeah for sure. There's no saying that we can't do that. Right. Yeah, exactly. And so I think uh what are some of your practices and how do you keep yourself grounded in that way? You know, is it it's just coming back to art or setting aside time for creativity? Um, I know you go on walks a lot, right? And explore. Yeah. Let's let's get into that process. How do you keep your mind juggling settled? so many things right yeah. now? But I think like now that I'm so busy, I just literally like I kind of like that. And mm -hmm. I find when I'm not busy, I'm like, man, like, I don't know how I'm going to pay rent or whatever this month. You know, I found, you know, that kind of pace. And it's still like a thing where I'm trying to find a schedule because this is what I do full time. So, right. you know, getting in the morning, stretching, being yep. motivated with people like you that keep their body right. Yeah. Um, just trying to like focus on that. So it's long term, it, it can it can hold what I have all my chaotic lifestyle. And but uh, I like getting on my motorcycle, you know, if I'm working on a detailed painting. I'll get out there and, and sweat and do something yeah. that I'm like, feel more life. Like, you know what I mean? Just like mm -hmm. get out there and, and feel something, um, within the city, go on a bike ride and then I'll come home and tap in and, and not feel like I missed out on the day or something. And, and not that painting, you feel like you missed out on the day, but there is a time where you're just sitting in front of a canvas for hours on end Yeah, and you kind of need those breaks and stuff. So it, 
it is a no reset. Balance. Yeah, the reset button. Yeah, I think. Um, if, I mean, getting just your mind and body synced up, it it creates more space for creativity. Yeah. You know, when you can, when can you can look at what you want to do in life from square one instead of just being manipulated by everything that's coming at us all the time, right? You know, a lot of the times when I go out on a run or you'll go out on a bike ride, you know, it's a, it's a great reset for the mind um, because it seems to make us feel like or remind ourselves how small we are in a sense, for sure, yeah. right? But when I look at your artwork, there's so much inspiration from just things that are around us yeah i think that comes within like what you see out of life right like mm-hmm. you've sacrificed a lot you serve for the country and a lot of people take that for granted you know and you learn that over time of like their work ethic or their their background of like everybody comes from different walks you know yeah. and so uh for me it's like kind of all i've ever known yeah i grew up started like just mowing yards doing whatever i could to like ford bike parts and stuff when i was 12 so i know like if worst case scenario i can go go back to mowing yards for money and for sure a lot of people don't feel like that they can backtrack that far to like yeah get their money right or whatever like yeah yeah. hustle for it or what whatever and get another job like um so i'll do that but i think it you get to learn um just the sacrifices and what life means to you if you're able to like build those memories and it says a lot about a person i think when they're that busy and it's like man yeah you probably had a lot, you know, had a lot going on in your life and you're still kicking, you're still going, thriving Every hard. Day, so yeah, it's cool. Yeah. But if I can reset myself and, and come back to um, acknowledging that that struggle is real hmm. or that grind is real, then that's where gratitude comes from. For me, is that acknowledgement of, you know, how far I have come or hmm. my friends, the people that I'm interacting with. Like, yeah, you want to bring everybody else up too. Right? Yeah, for sure. We can all do that for each other. And, you know, I I said in the last episode, and I'd like to reiterate, you know, that a lot of us have stories. A lot of us have had hard things that we have gone through and we can be there for each other and support each other through those things. Um, But we don't necessarily need to speak onto them all the time. Right. Yeah. Because these things are felt like when it's when we say it's become a popular term these days is like to feel seen like. For me, that's just like sharing space with individuals and really being present enough to feel, you know, what somebody has to bring to the table. And um, if they're carrying themselves in an authentic manner yeah, or if they're just kind of saying all the things or doing all the things. Getting the just, street cred. You yeah, know, I got to get that street cred. Yeah, that clout. And it means nothing, really. <laughs> no, it only goes so far. And you stick around and you realize that, you know, a lot of people, they're saying all the right things, but... There's, there's no depth to yeah. it, you know, and, and that scares the shit out of me sometimes, you know, cause I, uh, I don't want to be that guy. Gotta keep that social distance. Yeah. Down, so, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, so we, uh, we have to remind ourselves where we come from. And for me, you know, Austin is such a beautiful city, um, for me to explore, especially now, yeah. you know, cause there's a lot happening around us. Yeah. And I've been thinking about it a lot lately. And, you know, as I see the city grow, um, being from here, you know, I've, I've really tapped into that. And I've truly decided that I will be in Austin, Texas for my entire life. Yeah. Cool. Um, you know, I, I'm going to travel seasonally. Mm-hmm. I'd like to bounce in and out of here. But I think there's a deep rooted connection to this city. And I'm really excited to grow with it. Man, right? Yeah, I've been to other cities and fortunate to like even, you know, in, in Kansas in high school and stuff. I was yeah. like, I'm never gonna go see the water. Yeah, I'm in the middle of the U.S. Mm-hmm. I have like families here. Yeah, you know, everybody's yeah. just happy where they're at. Yeah, and yeah, as I came here, it was like everybody wants to collab. Everybody wants to see people succeed. Yeah, and since I've visited New York, California, and all these different places, it's not. It's kind of you. You get those pockets within our like-minded people and For social. Sure events and stuff but uh yeah here it's crazy it's becoming yeah. such a hub too because yeah. it's, it's a central location and the ease of you know austin airport and the ability to bounce out west coast east coast colorado yeah. you know and, and i kind of lucked out yeah you know? just I worked my so. way down south straight down 35 yeah yeah <laughs> so got the hell out of Dallas. never had money for new york <laughs> or california you know it's like 
Yeah. I didn't yeah. want to go to New York in the Civic and just sit in the, you know, in the back all, you know, so. Well, we also touched on uh, something that was interesting to me. So I brought my van over to Jason's house and uh, it wasn't complete yet, but my wrap was done. And uh, we were talking about how I have my logo up on the roof. And I didn't think much of it. I thought, you know, this might be cool for some drone shots or whatever. But I, I just kind of, I was honestly like, I don't know why they put my logo on the roof. And uh, Jason, yeah, I want to get into. I think I know like, what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Like, tell him about how you started painting trucks. Yeah. Like, uh, just uh, when we went to New York and took a trip, we had a legal, like, wall that we were painting for a record company uh, within spray TX. And, um, while I was there, I was only there for like three days. It was a chaotic trip. You know, yeah. I had food poisoning, oh. slept in like a room that was like the size of a bathroom and then had to sweat it out all night and then wake up six in the morning and go paint the paint. subways. Um, and luckily this 50 year old dude that's been tagging there forever, he goes by just, but he was at the beginning of like 1990s, like Beyonce videos. Yeah. And that's how he got paid with his art doing graffiti and stuff. But he took us down to the subways right after being sick and stuff and yeah. got around and I was like, man, there's so many trucks, uh, just around like those food trucks yeah. with the rooftop. Everybody's painting the sides of them, but the yeah. whole, like in, you know, there's so many buildings around from the top view, the tops could be painted and everyone in the buildings could just be seeing your work and, yeah. and no one on the ground would ever paint over it because they couldn't see it. Yeah. They're not on from a ground level. They don't even know that the top of their trucks painted. Yeah. And everybody in, downtown manhattan's looking down at the streets yeah. from their offices and they're seeing jason's artwork yeah and uh you know there's there's little pockets of innovation and creativity and ways to be seen that you know it just takes a little bit of a little bit of you know just looking at something perspective looking at it a little differently and saying all right how can i believe my mark yeah. How are people going to notice Dude, my and, shit? Yeah, and the population's getting so, you know, the everybody it's just getting wild. It's like now you can't reinvent the book, but you can definitely add to it. You can you can find a way to feel comfortable within something you created that makes you feel like, wow, like it's a little different, like for sure. Um, but it comes rarely and yeah. it, you got to be patient for when it. When it comes from acknowledging your surroundings and observing the world and really questioning lots of questions, what is my place and how can I do something that's meaningful here. Mm. And that doesn't have to be this big egotistical stick your chest out kind of stance of how do I get noticed or how do I get laid or whatever it is? How do I get money? You yeah. know, like it doesn't have to be that. Yeah. It can come from a compassionate and loving place of true value and authenticity. And I think that you'll be much more well received um, in the long term, mm -hmm. you know, by asking yourself those questions yeah. and really, you know, just wondering, you know, how am I going to do something of value to me? And it may not even be of importance to anybody else. Yeah. But finding your place. Yeah. That's, a, yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think of words to like say that, but it comes within for sure. Like, um, whatever it may be that you're inspired by, even if you're like reading a book and just like, yeah, just find that moment to do it, you know, like, yeah, I think words are trivial, man. Like, we don't need them, yeah. right? But yeah. taking the time um, to read or go on a walk um, to find, you know, a moment of silence and just find clarity because clarity doesn't necessarily need to be expressed. Clarity doesn't need to be heard. We have a very human desire for it to be, to feel like we're understood, but that's validation acting out, Yeah, you know? And it's like, man, we're just fine here. We're just fine. Yeah. I've, I've, I kind of fought with that like in yeah. a sense of just like music. I love music. Dude. I love how you can get everything off your chest within one song. You, yeah. you could even throw a beat to it before you even start getting inspired to like what you're going to write about or stuff like that. And it's like, man, how am I going to get that kind of notoriety through painting? And like, there's a lot of like discourage within that mm -hmm. where you're like, man, it's like, you know, you kind of want that like people checking it out. But then you grow like, then you just it's all the same stuff, but like I found a way to like painting is kind of like that. And I've been told that before. It's like, I've heard musicians like, man, I wish I could paint. Yeah. Um, and it's like, yeah, it's kind of fun. Like it's cool. And like, you can definitely reach people and people do the same things and yeah, uh, learn about the same stuff together. I think it's cool. I think, it, you know, I think that's interesting. And just to kind of touch on, you know, different ways that we interact and, you know, how you can 
let somebody know that they're appreciated in a genuine manner. I think you've probably had interactions where you've sold art that you put your, your heart and soul into, you know, and, um, it's gone up in some big gallery and you got some, some dude that has got a big check, you know, ready for you. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, has there been any, um, where in the middle that you prefer for somebody that's getting genuine, um, enjoyment out of your art and really understands it or thinks they do, you know, and like wants to hear the story or, you know, or are we just looking at, you know, what most would deem success? You know, what, how has that process fallen for you? Uh, if like for somebody else starting to like paint and, and get. Yeah. Just like, how is that? Yeah. Get a drive going and the ball rolling. Yeah. I mean, galleries, like I love galleries. I think everything comes into play, right? Like you want to paint a wall, but that doesn't really come first. You like paint a canvas kind of small, mm. stay in your own little bubble working. And then, um, but I think like a, I don't know. Galleries, everything's important yeah. to like the process. Um, it's more like, narrative based. Yeah. Like, and you don't get one on one. Like if you yeah. make a gallery sale, you could probably get a check in the mailbox, but you don't get to meet the person that bought your painting. So it's yeah. kind of like, uh, like mm-hmm. a, you know, you learn to what to put in there and like learn something from it. And, but I've always been in galleries. I'm in three different galleries in Austin. Yeah. Um, and so I try to keep them full with stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like people coming in from out of town or tapping into the galleries that are well known or, or at least have some build up. Right. So I think it's like still important to stay in there, even For though sure. they're taking like a 50% cut. Yeah. Know, sometimes. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I think that's like, it's becoming more of an important conversation with um, galleries and, and um, artists collaborating in a way that's beneficial to the artists, you know, and I even realized it, you know, with being new to the space and having vendors and like, it's very easy for money to get confusing, but we have to remind each other um, of, you know, what's truly important for us in the value and giving each other the, the platforms to express ourselves first. And then if we can all bring each other up around that, give back. When we're yeah. Doing, you know, yeah. But that has to be very clear in the narrative. Yeah. And so I hope to see more galleries and something cool studios was such a great example of that, you know, I, with that yeah. pop-up concept where, there's open retail space around Austin and they're approaching these spaces and saying, Hey, can we have an art gallery? And then giving, you know, a select few artists the space to. Yeah. You long is done really well for himself. And he's one of the artists that I've seen in the city where I like to, when I see an artist, I kind of like to be unexpected, you know, like if I know what they're going to paint, it's like kind of dumbs down the joy right. of it a little bit more. And he was one where I'm like, damn, who painted that? Yeah. So, and I'm like, Oh, that's you long sick. And it was just like a, it's a horse or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's he like, doesn't have any specific style. Yeah. But he learns a lot from just bouncing around like that. And so he's yeah. got his own space now and, um, he offered it to me and just yeah. fill it up and I'm like, all right, well, what, what can I hang here? And he's like, just wherever you want to put the artworks and stuff. And some galleries are pretty conservative about that. They don't, you know, that we'll set it up for you yeah you know, and it's like some p- art pieces i kind of want in a position specific yeah, placement yeah exactly so um he's been very like free and open-minded in that sense too it's good it's important yeah man so let's get to the extreme side of jason let's go let's what's the the bmx background the oh, ninth yeah. street the ninth street cool B- how did you get started there uh bmx has been in my life for for a long time i grew up around racers um, just dirt track racing, um, met this guy named Tom Dugan and he turned, uh, he turned pro here and that's kind of the reason why I moved, moved here and stuff. Okay. But I'll, I'll talk about that. He's, uh, just growing up in high school, I would just take a wheelbarrow on a shovel and I would go jip even middle school. I wouldn't go to history class. I would just go grab a shovel and you know, if my you mom didn't like history class either. None of them really. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Me neither. laughs> yeah. So, uh, and, and that's just the young rebel that we are, I guess, at the beginning. You know, yeah. I wish I would, some of the stuff I'm like, man, I wish I would have sat down and given a shit. But yeah, I, but at the same time, like I knew I just wanted to paint um, and there was a way to do that. My grandmother, not to bounce around too much, my grandmother was a full-time clown. Okay. Um, and, and she's still around, but she, going to visit her, she would do like tricks. She was in the circus and yeah. stuff like that. So there's all kinds of stuff for me to be inspired like as, a, fun, as a kid. Fun, playful yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, so with the bmx like i always rode bicycles um since i met him and tom dugan at the time was 12 years old riding a 16 inch bicycle bmx bicycle with no brakes yeah and he would be jumping these 30 foot doubles like dirt jumps 
with his dad digging and just in the forest. And I was like, who is this kid? It's this kid is hard. going crazy. Yeah. yeah. He's like, yeah, just not, he's like fearless for sure. And so growing up in high school, I would see this kid get manipulated by all the football players. And he'd, you know, he'd be the first one wearing all the skinny jeans and trying to be different. And I'd see him kind of be shoved in a corner. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've had those friends where I, I've been fortunate enough to like see how people react to him and stuff. Um, so he's, he's one of them where he doesn't care about what anybody thinks of him. It's, if it's a negative thought, um, but he pushes the sport and I would always in high school, I'd build ramps for him. We'd go to houses and steal all the wood that they were building the houses with. Yeah. We'd just throw it on top of the car and his, <laughs> his mom would let us build ramps Strap in the backyard. Yeah. yeah. His mom would just let us build ramps in the backyard. So I'd build this 20 foot ramp and he would just fly, you know, and yeah. And I was like, this kid's going to be crazy when he grows up. Yeah. And, and something he, special. You yeah. just recognize it. Yeah. And so he came here about five years before I did. Mm -hmm. And then uh, he's like, man, check out this river. Look how much fun we're having. Oh, you're not here. And I was like, oh, man, come on now. Yeah. And so I, I had to be there. And, um, man, since then, he's he's got his own Etney shoe. He's sponsored mm -hmm. by Odyssey. And it's awesome. So to, then there's not many people out of my high school that have, like, pushed. Succeeded. Yeah, succeeded in a way. You know, they're still around and doing their thing. And um but yeah there's a couple where i'm just like damn this is so cool that they're doing yeah. their thing so it's definitely motivation in the back of your head if you know someone that has inspired you before or they're yeah. with you today it's like just think about that they're probably ticking they're probably doing their thing somewhere yeah i imagine he might speak about you the same way in a sense i hope so yeah he's yeah. kind of like i don't know he's gnarly doesn't give a fuck yeah, yeah. no he does he does when the time's right if somebody asks about me or something yeah. like that but he's moving just you know wants to go fast yeah go yeah. fast that's cool man well i think you know there's something to be said for that and polarity is huge in my life you know like i always try to see both sides of, of everything in the way i approach and um you know i'd like to get into that so there's two very different places one you know an extreme sport like bmx and mm -hmm. having that you know no hesitation yeah. you gotta commit yeah there's crazy. no halfway on a bike <laughs> yeah, yeah you know sure. and and then on the other side to have this beautifully passive um appreciation for detail and mm. meticulous um you know just work it's, yeah it's it's so badass you know that that picture i posted the other day of you just doing those trees yeah. your, your face is like it's from the canvas yeah yeah <laughs> you know and uh, like i just appreciated so much that someone caught that moment because there's so much detail in that picture yeah. And to see how close you are to that canvas, trying to just get it right. Man. Thanks, and dude. like a lot of people don't have, I don't have that. I know? don't know. It's, it's something when you even go on a walk, I think I, you'll be just like keeping your head up, focus on like if a homeless person is going to rob you or whatever. And then like, but then you, when you find that time to like, there's a butterfly or there's like yeah. some flowers and like, look how the shadow is like facing this wall or something. And, yeah. and I think it's like, I've always wanted to be a photographer too. So I appreciate that in a sense i was around yeah. that and uh the details and like someone could paint a door but they forgot the doorknob yeah and it's not really a door like it's like i don't know details matter yeah yeah for sure yeah and my friend kate shout out again <laughs> she says uh mm -hmm. all the time she reminds me she goes here's to being fucking dialed <laughs> dialed <laughs> yeah it's a good reminder yeah just dial it in dial it in so um yeah man so anything else you'd like to touch on um I don't I'm trying to think like cuz I had a couple of things in mind but um Yeah. I know we uh we spoke about earlier uh, briefly but just kind of like getting into etiquette and appreciating big walls, you know, from someone that's either an artist or not an artist um or looking to get into the space, you know, what what are some of these um you know just how do we respect an artist in a sense of feeling that they're appreciated um but then also the side of like getting painted over um which is you know it's just there's a lot to that there's a lot of different approaches i think from my perspective i think there's huge walls where people take massive amounts of time mm -hmm. and do very meticulous work um to express themselves and then I think probably most of the time it's either gangs or kids running around that don't appreciate like that aspect of art, you know, or they're just trying to straight up disrespect it. So what's your take on getting painted over? It's dangerous. Maybe just cause I look aggressive, like tattoos or something. And I just look like a target or something. Yeah. I don't know. I've learned that over time. Like 
if if I would have taken back, like I, I don't want to be that guy, but I probably wouldn't have any tattoos. Yeah. But now that I have some, I'm ready to get covered. Get more. Yeah. Yeah, but it's like, Same. but at the same time, like, uh, it, like, uh, for people that haven't like found themselves and they're ready to be aggressive with someone else, I'm like the perfect target. Yeah. And I've learned that over time, and um, I've had several guns pulled on me here in town. I've had knives pulled on me. I've been jumped several times for painting. You know, it's yeah. like, um, so there's a lot to it. But there I think is. like it's it's that's not going to happen for everybody. No. I'm just saying it's just my track record, I guess. Yeah. Like, um, but I, cause I, I feel like I'm, I draw the line between being a graffiti artist and a street artist. And, and most of the time you're either one or the other, mm-hmm. you know, like graffiti artists don't like me cause I'm making money with it, but it's like, yeah, the, I had to get off the porch, you know, it's like, that's I had sick. to figure it out. And there, um, but then, like, I know how to graffiti. I grew up in that background where I don't. Yeah. I, I'm not scared to go paint whatever. Yeah. And if you want to go to an illegal spot and yeah. paint, you're kind of looking over your shoulder. Then that's not cool. Like, I'll go to your, I'll go to your graffiti spot. Yeah. And I'll spend two hours there and not look over my shoulder. You know. Yeah. So it's like I'm not scared to go do that. And I think a lot of people kind of like um, in the graffiti world have that thing against me or something. But um, for sure. But I'm here to, you know, street artist is here to stay. There's more yeah. of a positive impact. The negative stuff is only going to last so long. You can only go out at night and drink so many 40s and just get disruptive yeah. before you're like, dang, you're in a hole and no one's going to pull you out, you know? So, yeah, or a cage. Yeah, yeah, or a cage for sure. And that's not fun. So, no. Yeah, yeah, man. I think that's, I, I think there's something beautiful about, you know, being willing to bleed for yeah. whatever your pursuits are, you know? Yeah. And having said you've done that, I'm sure you have such an appreciation for, yeah, just, just a process. Yeah, it's it's a process, man. A lot of pain. Pain is the ultimate teacher here in life. I think uh and we don't notice those things until it like years later or something. Yeah, like. hindsight. Yeah. And it might have been a lesson within ourselves. Like I got a I got a felony for painting on a rock. You know, I drew drew on a rock that's the size of my palm hand, you know. Got a felony for it. Was going to serve 3 years and I ended up got finding a good lawyer here because of good community. Yeah. And paid my way out of it. You know, it was like I had to come up with like 15 grand in a month. Yeah. And uh, I was like, oh, I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm probably going to serve some time. Yeah. Um, But it was like, but it was just a lesson for myself to learn. For sure. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Just not draw on a rock near a state park. <laughs> <laughs> That's so ridiculous, yeah. man. But, but I got sure. like half the people, you know, I, it, it was because I posted it on Instagram. Oh. Um, So like, and I didn't say I did it. I just posted it. Yeah. It got back to you. Yeah. I got, you know, I got a gun, bunch of good comments you know mm-hmm. like a hundred good comments where it was like you're a caveman like this is where it started i'm glad i could go to this spot and see your work and then like the other was like keep it in the city like all this other yeah. stuff and I, and I could relate like i was like dang like yeah i should probably not paint where you want to go see like a butterfly and go right. to hang out so yeah it was like a a thing that good i had to learn and i didn't know at the beginning i was just being hard-headed kind of about it yeah because it wasn't a big deal i was like i can go scrub it off or something but uh <laughs> but yeah it's like those things that yeah for sure yeah it's all 2020 hindsight but yeah. i think uh moving forward those are all super important lessons to learn yeah and uh i think the message is to just keep on tracking keep on applying yourselves to you know just asking yourself more questions about um, what our approach is here in life mm-hmm. um, how we want to show up in the world and uh is everybody getting an amber alert or something Yeah. Yeah, we're getting uh, this new live concept, right? <laughs> Little hiccups. No, it's all good, man. I think um, I'm really excited to be here, man. I'm, yeah. I'm super excited to to come this far and, yeah. and sit Same. down with you, man, and and uh, for you to be featured um, in this this gallery and just our our paths keep crossing. And uh, I think that's really special. Man, it's uh, formed in such a short amount of time. And some sometimes you'll meet someone and it's like, dang, this is perfect. Like, And I've always wanted someone in, to talk about the art world. And, and there hasn't really been anybody that has a podcast about street art or like or you specifically do different things but uh yeah you bring you bring in those people that i'm trying to yeah Yeah. i'm trying to observe you know what really needs to be spoken on um what i grew up appreciating about austin Mm -hmm. um and you know i think that's that's the platform that's the message and what we do with that there's no limits you know it's I, i meet new people every day from the vendors or from the the venues 
um, from people that are attending and want to contribute. There's, there's so many different types of people that have so much to offer in this world. And that's the most important message for me to stand behind is that I grew up in this city. I love this city. And the growth here is inevitable. That's cool. It, it, is, it is growing so fast. And if we all just sit here and appreciate what Austin is in this moment, it'll be gone in a matter of years. It just yeah. will change. Man, that's cool that you, uh, that you say it like that being from here. I, I hear a lot of people from here and they're kind of stale about it. And yeah, everybody's from coming from California to move here. And it's yeah. like, dude, if this happened to my city, I'd be hyped. Yeah, dude. I mean, there's a lot of optimistic people that are moving here and they're putting their money into making this community better. Mm -hmm. Now, if we want the culture and the vibe to stay the same, then all we have to do is speak about it. All we have to do is acknowledge what we like because I've moved a lot of places. I've lived a lot of places. And if there's not like a strong baseline of, of what I like about a place, then I'm just going to keep doing my thing, yeah. you know, yeah. and, or I'm just going to like change it. You know, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm going to get used to home and I'm going to bring home here, yeah, you true. know? So, but there's a lot of people that are starting businesses. They're starting boutiques. They're starting, they're building wineries. They're doing things that they couldn't do Yo. with their money in Cali. Yeah. They're coming here. And yeah, there's, there are issues that are arising because of that, but we're not going to change anything just by bitching. Yeah. You know, like we have to take action and there's no reason that we can't do that from the street level. Right. That's why I like talking to artists. I'm not an artist myself, but I like talking to artists because they have an eye for detail and authenticity and remaining grounded and real and hustling to just like. I know, think make everybody, I think everybody's got some art in them. For when sure. I hear that, I'm like, yeah. man, I don't know. No, nah, I got you. Yeah. But you know sure. what I mean? Like, yeah. Uh, everybody's got a little something to them. No, I don't see anybody else doing this. Yeah. You know? Not right but, now. Not right now. Not, not right now. Room. But someone comes in and plugs let's up. Get that blueprint. But uh, no, I think that's that's the future, you know, for for me, and uh, you know, just aligning with people that that resonates with um, or see the value in that. Keep approaching me. Keep, you know, helping me dial this thing in, um, and let's grow together um, because we all want to show up in the world in a lot of similar ways. And, um, there's no way, there's no reason that we can't collaborate and share space and get people out. You know, there's a lot of people, you know, sitting at home watching Netflix right now and, uh, you know, it, that's fine, but we could also get out and live our lives and, and, uh, learn something new and hear perspective and, and, uh, continue to grow together, you know, yeah. just from inspiration. Yeah. It's really cool that you've. I don't know. You've done it as far as the van and everything. It's like limitless for sure to an extent. You know, it's like that's exciting for me, man. I, I bought a school bus um, for fifteen hundred bucks uh, two years ago, and I, it's a short bus with like two extra windows, so it's like a handicap bus. But yeah, it sits at twenty five <laughs> feet, and then I raised the ceiling up to eight feet. It's so sick. Um, and I bought it for like you know nothing. So yeah. it's like. I'm excited to gut that thing out and set it in the driveway, have coffee and figure out a game plan for that. Yeah, and man. I mean, you were a kid with a backpack and now you're a grown ass man with a van. Like there's no <laughs> limits, you yeah. know, like let's go, let's, Dude. let's, let's get a caravan. I like that. It's a things. school bus too. Cause like I yes. never had a car growing up. So it's like, you know what I was thinking sick. about? I want to get, uh, see if we could do this, like a neon, uh, stop sign, like from that, on the side dude, it's like eight, it feet by eight feet yeah and it comes out with a shaka <laughs> yeah. and it's just like it just says like chill yeah. or something instead of like stop done you know? i didn't even think about the stop sign releasing dude. it's such a cool feature you yeah, could do anything only, yeah 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 dude i saw some dude on youtube that uh he blacked out all the letters of school bus and it just said the cool bus so yeah like, i dude. really like that and if too. i need to like yeah dude it's crazy i like pull up pick up somebody i can turn on the yellow lights and the, the sign people would just stop <laughs> yeah make a man feel powerful <laughs> that's a platform to stand on man yeah, yeah. well cool guys well Project. um Thank you, Jason, yeah, for thank coming you. on, man. Yeah. I think uh, this is a conversation that I'll continue to have. Um, anytime you want to hop on, let's do it, man. I think cool. there's there's a lot to be said, um, and we're going to continue to to ride this thing out. Heck yeah. But uh, I'd like to give a shout-out to, to Native for um, having us on today. And, and um, we have, I think, nine weeks here, May and June, 
and uh, really excited to see how we can grow this thing and continue to dial it in and uh, see who we can get out here and get involved and continue to grow this space because um, this place is already such a hub and and uh, I think there's there's a lot of potential here and and we're going to expand on that and there's no limit to how far that can go. That's right. So, um, yeah, maybe one day we'll be dudes with a plane. Dude, yeah. <laughs> we say, yeah, right. I want to paint a plane. That would be tight. Let's go. Yeah. Hey, put that out there. Anybody yeah. knew what to do with the plane? Yeah, you got a plane. <laughs> it sits in your backyard. It got no windows. I'll paint it. <laughs> That's it. Well, cool, guys. We'll make sure to go check out um, the vendors that are still around and uh, support them. Let's, uh, let's grab some drinks. Let's enjoy some, some music. Buy liquid candy. Came back out this time, and uh, let's give it up one more time for Jason Etherly. Yeah, and thank y'all. Yeah, and thank you to everyone that came out today. Much love. Out. <laughs>